enjoyed. And we're live on our first official episode of What's in the Box. Uh, I'm Tolgar Alpagut, VP of Marketing here at Tatsoft, and I'm joined by Mark Tacalini, our founder and CTO. How are you today, Mark? I'm great. Hello, everyone. So uh, last week, we had kind of just tested out the platform to see how it would work. And uh, Mark and I got together and thought there was an opportunity to kind of explain a little more in depth each week, every Thursday, 4 p.m. Central, uh, to answer some questions that we've had overall about what's in the box when it comes to Factory Studio powered by Frameworks and elaborate on some of the things from a conceptual level and dive in a little bit more from there. And so this week, uh, we decided to cover the Frameworks object model. And before we delve into that, I just want to say that we encourage you to join us in the chat and leave your questions there. We can answer those in real time. We'll also be answering questions on forum.tatsoft.com. And for those of you asking about the recordings, uh, we'll publish those on our website as well as LinkedIn, YouTube, and the forum. So uh, let's just go ahead and get started here. Mark, the reason that we kind of picked Frameworks object model was, you know, Walker Reynolds, um, who kind of talked about that particular aspect in his My Factory Studio story. Uh, you know, he was very excited about it because he said it's a real differentiator. And one yes, of the key things that was and one of the things that he said was that everything is an instance of a class, right? And that, that always kind of resonated with me in just the way that he kind of explained. So would you mind just elaborating a little bit about what we're referring to when we talk about the object model and what's different within our product? Definitely. And I will start not specific in our implementation, uh, but revealing some concepts on what is an object model, <laughs> what is an sure. space, because frankly, uh, myself, I was a C programmer many decades ago, and I went to my first class of C++, and they're saying, oh, now it's object-oriented. So you can have those classes, you can public members, private members, namespaces, divide the class, base class. <laughs> and after two hours, I say, oh, and that to make my life simple, <laughs> because <laughs> on the beginning, it was frankly quite confusing. Uh, I had a two hours presentation of those concepts and on the end, he show, okay, now you have two strings. You can put A plus B on the string. You don't have to call a method. Oh you can God. just put the plus sign. And I think <laughs> to myself, oh, sorry, I prefer to, to call the old string cat function <laughs> and not use objects. <laughs> Uh, so, frankly, I will review those concepts because the power of the objects, uh, the more challenging are your applications, the more quicker and fast you want to create your applications, the more important those concepts are. <laughs> uh, one challenge in our, our area that if you try to simplify too much the examples, you show an example and say, yeah, but for that, I don't need classes. Yeah, because this example is not real. It's not mm -hmm. what you're facing. So today, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to give really a training. And I'm not really worried too much on specific applications. Because with the time we have, I have to simplify a little too much. So I'll put the focus to really make and uh, understand the concepts on what is an object model, why it's important, and what implementation we did on that concept in our products that make that so unique that as far as I know, you are really the only framework on automation that fully supports that model. Fantastic. Like the idea, Togar? <laughs> I like that. So yeah, let's start from, okay. I mean, I, you know, we, we never want to assume that everyone knows everything, right? So for sure, if we yes. can go through that process and just make sure that we're all in agreement and speaking the same thing. So please. Yes. And uh, one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to share my display. Uh, okay. So you should be able to see now uh, this little, frankly, that's our website. I'm just showing some images here from our websites. Do you have that, Toga? Yes, I've got it. Showing Perfect. Right. So uh, some concepts that are not unique from us that in some sense, many of the platforms they have, 
is that when you create a solution, you create uh, around some real-time variables, namely tags, you have your alarms, graphics, SQL databases. So those are the core built-in functionality of the TouchSoft framework. And frankly, those concepts, they are also present in many platforms. And uh, when you do your applications, uh, you have to do lots of interactions with those objects all the time. So let's go to our own product to give some practical examples. If you're not familiar with Factory Studio, that's our platform where you can select the projects. So I'm going to here to create a new project. Oh, in fact, I just already created one, I believe. Uh, so uh, let me get that one. And uh, on, when you create a project in your platform, those concepts, they are very easy accessible. You have your tags where they find your variables. So you can go here and create whatever you need for your data model, security, devices, alarms, databases, codes, displays. Again, that's very typical, not only from our platform, but in most of the platforms. And one concept that it's many other SCADAs have, let's start with that uh, be before we go on classes, is that when you have a variable or a tag, that tag has the value, but that tag has also some additional properties. Uh, so if I, I need to do a display or access some code with that variable, if I need, for instance, the quality of timestamp, let's create here some little access uh, uh, to that variable. What do you have? I can go and pick up from my tags. I will put dots. It will show all tags I have uh, in this application. And then I will be able uh, to uh, pick up my uh oh, hold on it seems there's some delay in the feedback but <laughs> i'll pick up my temp one variable uh, by default when you pick up a tag we are picking uh the value of the tag but in our platforms uh we there are lots of other additional properties related to the tag let's show what are those properties by default, if I pick up a tag, it means I want to see the value of the tag. But it's a very common concept in automation that in addition to the value, you have the quality of the tag, or you can have the timestamp of the tag. In some packages, they call that attributes. In some packs, they call those fields so quality, timestamp, or the value of the bit zero of that variable, there are additional properties related with that tag. So you help okay. me here, uh, Togar. So far, so good. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, yes. Uh, OK. So essentially, uh, in the variables, they have many attributes or many properties connected with the tag. And that's most of the products, they have that concept. What was the step we did in that soft? We expanded that concept that in most of the products are only for basic tag properties. We expanded to everything. So that's what I Walker said. If you have a security a user, if you have an alarm group, if you have communication devices, if you, if you have code you're running, Everything in your ob in your application, you also have the concept of projects, of, of properties, I mean, and fields, not only on tags. So uh, everything is an object, OK? Uh, well, let's try to give some examples on that. 
uh, if I have here my alarms, so I'm showing that in this application, I have three alarm groups. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to create a new group of alarms that requires acknowledge whatever it would be the properties of that alarm group. In most of the packages, if I want now to disable this group or know how many alarms are active, I need to start doing lots of scripting calls or mapping text properties because I need to create variables and do some programming to access the status of this alarm group. Because now it's not a tag, I'm talking about an alarm group. Because in our products, everything is an object. When I want to show data, for instance, create a text IO property. So the text IO, I, I, I'm going to show some value here in this field. You see that when we start typing, we do have tags here on the bottom, but we have everything, alarms, databases, devices, starts of the server computer. Everything you may have when your process is running, you have that out of the box. So try to follow me step by step to see even without training, without knowing any scripting, you'll be able to find your information if you know where to look. I am inside alarms. I create a group of alarm called new group. So if I want to find information about that, Help me here, Togar. Which of those names I would start looking? For alarm group would be alarm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, you, you know, know the best is simple when your marketing guy can do also. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's how you know. <laughs> now that you are inside alarm, what what about try to find a group? Okay. What I'm opening now is all the properties of the alarm objects for instance uh without having training what prob the property alarm total count would mean of course the total alarms i have active right now but if i don't want the total alarms i want only one specific group i go to my groups and we keep using the intellisense to show which groups i have you see the new one I created is already showing that wow. because everything, all the modifications we do, you don't need to save. They go to the project database configuration online and it's accessible right away. So if I go to this new group and I see, okay, what I can do with this new group? Oh, I can act all, acknowledge all alarms. I can have the total count of alarms. I can uh, search color, so for instance, this property total counts. So you don't even need to know programming or having learning uh, object oriented programming school. Uh, if you're an automation engineer, when you see that, okay, I'm looking the data from alarm group, new group, total counts. I understand the meaning of that, okay? uh make sense so for you part, yeah i just have a quick question about this so um and this is just something that's been asked to me before but obviously this is an ease of use right and it's also accuracy and and efficiency in terms of what you're doing uh as it relates to what's out there currently in other methodologies you know how, how much time savings are we talking to be able to do this and, you know what are what are the real differences as opposed to how other other products may be doing it or, you know, in a traditional environment? Uh, there are some products, to be fair, they even have some properties specific about alarms that is part of the tag fields. Uh, okay. Because if I go to tag and I pick up here, uh, uh, hold on, let me... Uh, go back here okay if i pick up one tag from my I application there may be and there are in fact some other products they, they like us that they have some alarm related properties in the tag like to show the alarm state of the tag mm -hmm. but that's as far as they go 
if they need to interact with the field communication devices or more deep on the alarm, they start on their, their server, uh, they need to rely typically in a lot of scripting or methods or creating new tags. So uh, besides being more time consuming, you are going to create much more configuration. Okay. And I am the old style lazy engineer that <laughs> believes uh, the best you can do is when you don't do or you don't write a code or you don't do anything. <laughs> so yeah. if you pick up things that are out of the box, not only you'll be quicker, but you'll be more reliable the configuration and also easier to do the maintenance. Uh, for instance, if I want to show here, not the alarm state, I want to show the date time or the name of my computer. In a traditional product, I have to go to the documentation to find examples on where I can get the computer IP. I'll have to find a method for that, okay? Yeah. Uh, in our case, uh, with zero programming, if I want to know uh, the computer name of the date of my server computer that this application is running, look those name spaces. Do you see something interesting here? I'm actually having what a little difficulty on my screen. It's a little smaller, but uh, what, you'll find seven. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I see that. Exactly. So uh, here, uh, if you go to server, here you have server dot computer IP, server dot computer name, date, wow. uh, all those things right away. So you have lots of information, functionalities accessible without you having to set up any kind of configuration, any kind of scripting, any kind of mapping, lots of. Uh, in this presentation, I'll touch only the top of the iceberg, but that is really lots of advanced functionalities you can do only by navigating those namespaces, okay? And uh, in fact, if I jump back to our website, our main website is statsoft.com. But we do have also this other website. Uh, well, it's linked. If you go to product documentation, you go to the docs.statsoft.com. They are linked where you have some online documentation. And in that online documentation, we explain that uh, all database connections, all PLC connections, they are in fact behind the scenes a .NET class. <laughs> and that's very important. I will explain a little bit because you cannot only benefit from our properties, but you can also use the full .NET framework in top of those objects for more advanced programming, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's go back here and try, uh, first of all, to explain what are namespaces because some people can get confused with that. So let's forget the programming and let's just think, okay? Using common sense, okay? Uh, if I want to create a tag with name Mark, okay? In fact, I use Mark with C. I can explain that one day. Uh, it's okay, I, I create a tag named Mark. What do you think, Togar? If I want to create an alarm group with also named Mark, do you think the software would allow or not allow? What should be the behavior? I don't believe it should allow. Because it would be confusing if I Absolutely. see Mark. Exactly, that, but, yeah. but that will be very limiting because yeah. I'm mm -hmm. here focused on alarm. I want to create a nice new alarm, but someone created a screen with that name. So at the same time, you'll be confusing to have two objects the same name. It will be very bad uh, that I have a, uh, a screen with a name, and now I cannot use that name for alarm because I have a PLC with that name. It will be too limiting. Yeah. So how we solve that problem to avoid the confusion but at the same time, give the freedom. That's the concept of namespaces. 
I can create mark here because the alarms and the tags are two different name spaces. <laughs> so uh, uh, don't uh, really uh, make joke with me now, but I want to explain to you that a name space is just a space for names. <laughs> That's simple. <laughs> okay. What that means when I'm creating tags, all names that I put in here, they are only related inside the tags. Uh, if I'm creating displays, the names that show here are, are only display names because they are under displays. You see? Mm -hmm. So when you are doing your application, your coding, those names that you see here, alarms, tags, displays, they are exactly namespaces. They are areas that we, we are going to have objects with their own names inside each one of those areas. Yeah. No, okay. Makes, makes great sense. So you have, with no problem, have a display uh, called header. You, you have a display called header. Uh, so uh, here, uh, I'm doing, uh, put here a button on the display. And this button, we are going to do an action. And the action I'm going to do is going to open a display. And here, I'm looking specific for a display. So it's showing only the name of my displays. There is no conflict at all to go my tags and try to create a tag called header because it is an under another area of my application. So when I'm doing my application, I can go to tag dot header or I can go to display dot header. It's not the same object. There is no, we are not going to have conflict now. Does it make sense? Yeah. And it's very, very powerful. So very advanced things that in other products would be quite complex to do, even advanced features uh, you can do right away. For instance, let's say you are doing some analysis, some real-time analytics. So you create these methods uh, called real-time analytics, whatever. And uh, these methods you want to run every one second. So I'm creating this code. And here in my code editor, I'm going to create my very uh, advanced analysis, whatever it is. <laughs> I will create a .NET variable, and I will call some .NET methods, uh, because by the way, we can call also the .NET uh, right away. So I'm doing some programming here. Uh, let's say, it's, instead of being some simple code, that code can be very time consuming. And I want to, to put on my display, I want to create a dashboard showing how much CPU each one of those uh, my tasks are taking. So when I'm running the application, I can monitor, even create alarms uh, if uh, the time to do the computation is too high. Uh, so I want to create a display going here, task one CPU time. And here in this field, I want to show the CPU time. Okay. How you do that in an old style package? You need to research this operating system calls to try to find out the CPU. And then you need to look on the product documentation because you don't want the computer CPU. You want only CPU of this specific calculation. Well, many products don't even allow you to do that. And even when they allow you to be a big research to find how. In our case, okay, let's try to think how it be. I'm trying to find the CPU of this object. So help me here, Toga. Where is this object? It's what kind of object is this one here? Scripts there, yeah. 
Exactly. And what kind of script? Is a task or a class? Is a task. Task, yes. Yeah, under it's, task. It's in the highlighted yeah. column. Yeah. Exactly. Classes are library. Tests are specific events that we run. So, okay. So, before I get uh, worried about if we have or not, let's search. Okay. I want you to know something about this script. So, I go to a script name space. Then, I go to my tasks. Under my task, I find my real-time calculation and here. And like an every object, object is a thing that has attributes. So when you put the dot, you see all the properties or all the attributes that has. So what you need to do is to find if you have something that it's what you're looking for. What, for instance, let's pick CPU time. Seems to be a good one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here I'm showing this dashboard how much CPU that analysis is taking every time I run that code. Okay. Wow. Yeah. No, I see that. Yeah. And the point is, there is lots of functionality there. And what does happen if you don't find your property? Oh, contact us. <laughs> because <laughs> perhaps there you, you did not found. And frankly, it's very, very easy to us extend the object model to add a new property. <laughs> Some of those, uh, I will not go on the details on the, the .NET programming. But it's very reliable and very safe to modify a class to add a new attribute. That allows our products to evolve to the specific marks requirements quicker as well. Because sometimes there are requirements that you don't need to create a full application. We can just extend our built-in object model to add that information that you need, OK? Mm -hmm. That's another thing to keep in mind. Uh, so essentially, uh, and everything you do on the application is like that. I, I, I will not have time to do uh, the full demo now, but if I want to put here a slider, OK? And I want this slider to do a zoom in and zoom out in a page. Okay. Right, Mark, can well, I just interrupt you for one second really quickly? Go um, ahead. We've got, you know, folks chatting in um, in, in our uh, chat as well as, you know, Walker is tuned in. So if you're okay on time, we can go longer than a half hour for sure. Okay. Well, we can do just a little bit more. Yes. Yeah. Whatever you want to do. Because, so. yeah, let's do more 10 minutes. Perfect. Because there are more two concepts that I want to show. So if I go to display, and I here show my displays, I see there is a property called zoom level. So what you do with the properties, it's uh, for alarms, you can have how many alarms are. For display, you can open, close, or do a zoom on the display. Uh, if you are on the devices, the communication with the PLCs, you'll be able to enable and Disable the connections uh, with databases, you'll be able to run queries. So you see, it's not only about tags, everything is an object. Okay. Yeah. And the final concept I want to explore it's better than being objects because it's an extension of the .NET. And that's a huge, huge difference. I uh, will uh, repeat that slowly because it's very important. We could create that, 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 that nice hierarchy of objects uh, by brute force. Uh, so uh, when I'm creating my application, I can have tags, alarms. I could create those, that tree, not necessarily being a .NET extension. But our classes, our objects, they are .NET objects. So if I have, for instance, a tag 
uh, and this tag uh, is of time, dates time. Uh, let's uh, create a variable, for instance, um, uh, startup time or startup uh, machine one. That's the time this machine is started, okay? Uh, because it's uh, based uh, on that uh, .NET extensions, everything here will follow the .NET properties. So if I pick up my tag, uh, that is the, uh, hold on, let's e browse here, the startup tag. Uh, if I pick up uh, this tag, the property value for this tag will have all uh, the built-in .NET properties uh, that you can do a lot with that because now you can go out of our products so if you want to uh, see everything you can do with a date time, uh, I'm not going to create examples code now because frankly it's too much, uh, but just so uh, the properties of a .NET, you can from our script, from our display, uh, extend and start using not only our built-in properties, but the built-in properties of the .NET itself. So if I want to pick up the day of year of that variable, uh, I have uh, that uh, day of year property available uh, right away. So uh, I don't need to do uh, any uh, programming, anything like that, because mm -hmm. I'm running on top of .NET. So I do have the property day of year as an extension of my tag. <laughs> That's incredible. Uh, I, I, this I, day I, I, of year, yeah, yeah. Wow. This day of year property is not something we created. Uh, in yeah. fact, uh, to know the details of all those properties and examples of use, I open uh, my browser because uh, you need to go uh, to the .NET documentation because all those properties and all those methods that you can do, uh, adding classes, subtract classes, it's built in on the .NET frameworks, not part of our programming, our products. What enable you to do that is because we are created our objects on top of the .NET. So you can use not only our properties, but you can call external libraries. Uh, you can go here and add uh, .NET assemblies uh you can do uh, all those things uh, right away because the final concept to conclude our section is not only everything our product is an object everything our product is an extension of a dotnet class uh i think that is one of walkers which mentioned that it's not only a class it's a dotnet class it's a dotnet object so it has additional value to leverage the Microsoft platform on top of the properties we added ourselves. You can leverage uh, the, the .NET classes and the properties of the .NET framework right away. Wow. I think that's it. Uh, explain that was not supposed to be a training. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was just to see. Uh, an explanation and to conclude, uh, not only extend our own objects, you can also go to .NET right away. So you see here when I put system dots, I'm showing all the .NET classes that are available right away to use in combination of our scripts, our displays, and our own extended objects. Okay. Yeah. I think that's enough. More than that, uh, it be go a little too crazy. <laughs> so I think it's that well, would be a good point to stop and reply some questions if someone has. Yeah, let's take a few minutes here for those that are you tuned in. Um, if you got any questions for Mark or myself or anything about the platform, please uh, drop them in the chat there. Um, I did have one question that I had received, um, Mark, and that was, mm -hmm. you know, how do we work those objects if we're programming in uh, Python uh, instead of .NET? 
uh, exactly the same uh, because whatever you're doing Python, and by the way, also if you are I'm doing HTML5 displays, uh, so I just should be quicker instead of create a Python application, I create a HTML5 because the concept is exactly the same. Uh, whatever language you are using, C++, Python, or in this case, JavaScript, the objects, they, they are always there. Of course, in this case, in the case of Python and HTML5, you cannot have uh, the .NET properties, but our namespaces, our properties, they are available to all languages, whatever is C Sharp, VB.NET, Python, or JavaScript. They, uh, all those properties, they are available in all namespaces. In, I'm sorry, in all programming languages. Okay. So to be clear, when you're doing Python or JavaScript, you cannot access the .NET calls. But our own objects, you can access with no problems. Okay. No, thank you for that. Yeah. Um, I appreciate I we definitely went a little bit deeper, which was great. I think you know there was a lot of benefit here. Um, and if anybody does have any questions after this, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to us. We're gonna go ahead and post this on our site as well as here on LinkedIn. Um, and we'll push it out also on the forum and on uh, YouTube. So wherever you consume your information, you can grab it. And uh, I think moving forward, we've got a list of some topics that we want to cover. And I'll put those out to the group as well uh, on our site for survey and kind yeah. of you know, let them choose a little bit. Uh, but, you know, we'll uh, announce what we're going to cover next week. And um, again, thank you very much for everyone for tuning in. And uh, thank you, Mark. Appreciate your thank time. Thank you. Uh, my pleasure. And a little teaser for next session. We will explain how we can mix many programming languages. In fact, even one language called another one is one of the sessions I want to have in the future. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. We'll see you guys next Thursday. Cheers.